Um, um, first of all, thank you so much, Berlin Ale, the Berlin F Film Festival. It's fantastic. It's such an honor to have an, our international premiere here. So thank you so much for the invitation. And thank you all for coming out. Um, we really never take our audience for granted. So we appreciate each and every one of you being here in, in this um, theater. So thank you, thank you so much. Um, I'd also like to pre um, acknowledge that um, Clarissa De Los Reyes, who did the first shoot in the, at the hospital, is also in the audience. She came all the way from the US. So thank you, Clarissa, for being here. And um, I guess we'll just leave it, uh, yeah. Maybe, I mean, you've presented us quite a scene. Maybe <laughs> some people need to <laughs> breathe <laughs> before it's uh, possible to even digest what we've seen. Uh, and I had the privilege of seeing the film before, so I could prepare for some okay. questions. <laughs> and I also uh, read about how this film was made. And if I'm informed correctly, uh, the first time when you, Ramona, went to the Memorial Hospital, it wasn't with the intention of making this film, but you were working on another research. Maybe you can give us a little bit of the background and how it all started. Yes, I was in the Philippines researching another film that had to do with reproductive health and reproductive justice. I actually wanted to follow um, a legislative bill in the Philippine Congress that had to do with uh, reproductive rights. Um, and it was called the Reproductive Health Bill, and it's a very simple bill. Seemingly simple, but in a Catholic country, it's not really that simple. So um, uh, the bill wanted to give access um, uh, to contraception for everyone, even the poorest of um, women in the country. Um, mandated sex education in, the, in early um, schooling, and also mandated prenatal health. So seemingly very um, uh, simple bill, but in the Philippines, because the uh, Catholic Church is very powerful and we're against it, this is a very controversial bill. But there was a movement to really support it, and I wanted to document that sort, sort of social movement to support this bill. And in the process of investigating that film, someone told me to visit Fabello Hospital, because they said, it's like an amazing place, your story might be there. And true enough, when I, when I visited, it, it was breathtaking, and um, I couldn't get it out of my head. So I knew my film was in the hospital, and basically, you know, the, chain, the film changed over the years, but basically, this became my film about reproductive health and reproductive justice, because it was just something that I couldn't, that I knew I had to do. You know, when a film catches you, especially as a documentary filmmaker, it doesn't let you go, and you can't sleep at night, you have to make it. Otherwise, you'll spend a lot of sleepless nights. So it's one, it was one of those things. Yeah, so um, I think it was for the first time when we have this trolley shot or when you walk past all these beds that, uh, I don't know if you share this, but I, I felt kind of frightened from the beginning. Who is who and all these mothers, so many babies, so it's like so chaotic, the scene inside the hospital that I think it must have been quite a challenge to uh, develop a structure or a narration in a place where so much is going on. If you would be able to tell us how you work together and how you develop the storyline that now we see as if, you know, it might have been the only possible one. But the only possible way. Um, uh, it's organized chaos, you know, um, inside the ward. And what I had wanted to do was not really follow the staff, but follow the mothers, because they, are, they were the ones who really touched me. The community of women and mothers that formed around those beds, to me, was what was very breathtaking, in a way. Um, and so I left my, in a way, I left myself with no safety net, because you can't really prep for any kind of um, casting before actually shooting, because I wanted to follow them as they uh, showed up in the hospital when they were um, the intake and discharge. So there's no preparing for that. But I know in a place like the hospital, that place, that stories would emerge. I just knew it. I also spent like a month before Nadia came, uh, arrived in Manila, just visiting the hospital. I wanted to know the inner workings. I wanted to know who uh, the labor nurses were and how things were gonna flow. Because once I knew that, like uh, the neighbor nurse who brought up um, 
Leia's twin, twin A. I knew that if I saw her in Ward 4, she was looking for a mother, right? And basically, if she was looking for a mother, it's probably the first time that the mother would like, be receiving her baby. So I knew that way beforehand. So that kind of information, I think, made it easier. Uh, but, you know, made it easier, but it was never easy because it was a lot of chaos, yeah, and obvious uh, uh, stories. Um, so we were get, given access to the hospital, but the only, the caveat was it was only, we were only allowed two people in there. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Nadia shot it, and I did, I did sound, and I'm not a sound person, that's why. Um, but that was the only way we could get access. So you do what you have to do to, you know, achieve it. Well, I, I take this and uh, continue asking the question, that is the hospital allows the two of you to be inside. But looking at the scene where we see two, sometimes I think I have even seen three mothers sharing one bed, uh, I think the least, if I were in their situation, I would want would be to be asked, well, would you like to be in my movie? <laughs> how, how did you build up the relationship? Because I think it had to be rather fast with the mothers to say, well, hey, we are a film team, additionally to what for most of them is a very, very difficult situation. Yeah, it was, but I think, uh, you know, this hospital has been covered before. The BBC has covered it and other news outlets. And usually those news, news outlets would only be there for a couple of hours and then leave, right? Mm -hmm. I think the fact that we were there every day, they saw us every day, and we were, you know, uh, I mean, she was carrying a camera, I had a boom, because we had to boom, there was no way to wire them, because obviously they only had the, you know, uh, hospital gowns, so there was nowhere to hook the mic. Um, I think seeing us every day, then they got to understand what it was we were trying to do. Um, some mothers said no, they, you know, and in which case uh, we didn't film them. We filmed a lot of births, and I felt like um, it wasn't right to ask them if they wanted to be filmed while they were in the midst of labor. I don't think they could have been, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I think it wasn't right. So we filmed it, and after the birth, I would explain to them, you know, we filmed your birth, but if you don't want to be in the film, let us know. And if they said no, then we didn't even bother with the footage. But if they said yes, then we, we continued. Mm -hmm. And I'd say, um, and you know, things can change daily. Sometimes you don't want to be filmed that day, and we understand. You know? So I just said, just let us know if today you don't want to be filmed. It, it's fine. And they have also a right to change their minds. Mm -hmm. So we just left it very open and constant talking to them. Uh, Nadia, maybe you want to share uh, your view and your experiences of the many days that you spent in the hospital. How was it for you as a camera person? Wow, I think this may have been one of the hardest films I've ever shot. Uh -huh. um, it was, you know, the circumstances, as you can see, were incredibly difficult. Um, it was only the two of us allowed in the hospital. It was the middle of the summer, so it was incredibly hot. Yeah. Um, the spaces that we were working with, you know, there are so many beds, so it's very narrow. And there are IVs everywhere and these tiny little babies, and so you have to be like very careful how you navigate the space. Also, I don't speak the language or understand it, so that was a huge challenge. I think, um, you know, probably within the first hour I was there, you know, you kind of have a, a process that you go into starting a film, and you have all these things that you do. <laughs> And as soon as I realized, not only do I not understand the language, I don't even know one word of the language. <laughs> so all these things that you know kind of go out the window and very quickly I had to readjust and figure out how I was going to follow stories um, of these women where I didn't understand even one word. So I think we pretty quickly figured yeah. out the system. Because since I was doing the boom, I had to deal with Nadia, like, to follow the boom. If I was moving the boom, then she would follow me, which worked for a while, but after, I think after a couple of weeks, Nadia, although she didn't understand the language, she understood body language and visual language, which is even more striking. So after a while, I would move my boom, and Nadia would stay there. I'm like, come on, Nadia, it's over. No, 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 just a beat more. There's a beat here. And she would be right, but that's that's like intuitive. That's like intuition, and you can't really, right? You can't really. Exp I guess you can explain it. Yeah. But it's really being very tuned in 
to body language yes. and how people moved and also the cadence, I guess, of the language. After a while, you, you yeah. get it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, my editor, Leah, doesn't also speak the language. Yeah. She cut it, so. <laughs> well, that's another adventure yeah. I think we would like to learn more about. Uh, Leah, you also uh, are co-producing, uh, yeah. have co-produced yeah. this film. Uh, so how did you get involved in the system? Was that only after you were asked to be the editor? Was it before? And how did this, how did your story ropes in into what we were told? Well, I've actually worked with Ramona for 16 years. She's cut all my films. She's yeah. editor first and co-producer second. Yeah. 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 So, um, and all of them have had Tagalog. <laughs> so I'm getting there slowly. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Ramona kind of went into hiding for a month and marked everything, all the footage, so that I could identify you know, what was happening in the scenes. And so she chose the main scenes that would work around, and then out of that month, we just tried to make it feel like a continuous week or so, something, um, so the story could just kind of unfold with these women. Um, I think it was something that in the last 15 years it's always been a dream for both of us to do an observational film. No talking yeah. heads, yeah. like this Me was too. really exciting <laughs> and no matter what else happened, we were going to stick to that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much coming to the, to the way of how you've worked. You said observational. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit more like what, you, what was on your mind when you were portraying the, the hospital very much as a universe of its own. So you deliberately decided to have some extra pictures outside uh, in the credits. Everything else is very much centered around the hospital. How, how, did, how did this rather radical concept uh, develop? Well, I, I think because in other films you've seen these, you know, women in poverty in their homes, right? I think you've seen it, in, or some people have seen it in other films, and I just wanted to make, uh, to me what was fascinating was the community of women that formed these very fleeting relationships mm -hmm. that are really the emotional core of the film, and that was the most important thing, and to sort of investigate that and make the hospital the entire universe. Because in a way, it's a tough hospital, but for a lot of them, it's a reprieve from everyday hardship, you know? So even if it looked really tough, life outside was tougher for a lot of these women. Yeah, I mean, I mean that uh, when, when this one sister who always has the microphone, when she's saying, well, those of you who should stay, you want to leave and the other way around. I mean, she's quite a character. Oh, she was. Uh, we, call, we called her the preacher nurse. <laughs> we filmed a lot, we filmed a lot of her. And uh, Nadia would be following her and say, is it over? I said, no, no, she's still, she's still going. I mean, we can have a whole other film with our preacher nurse. She's great. She talked for 30 minutes. Oh, yeah, there was one shot. It's just like a 30-minute, like, <laughs> ongoing thing. The best part was I had no idea what she or anyone was saying in the film until I, find, I saw the final cut of the film with subtitles. Oh. Yeah. So that's the first time I knew the storylines, what was going on, and I was I was amazed. It was like I'm watching the film, even sitting in it, watching it again. It's like watching it for the first time, almost like I wasn't even there because, you know, I just had no idea what she was saying or what anyone else. Was saying. No, I, I tried to tell you, like when the yeah. baby was lost, right? I'm like, she goes, "What's going on? The baby's lost. Let's go. Let's yeah. follow." <laughs> the baby's body. lost. I said, "Just go." Um, yeah. What's so, going on? So I, it, it was definitely almost like a soap opera. So <laughs> I got very involved in, you know the body language and sort of the dynamics between everyone. And so Ramona would sort of tell me at the end of every day what was happening. And so I would be ready for the next day to continue these stories. But it's definitely much different to understand it in like it's all of its nuance. Yeah, because I had to give her like a soap opera digest every yeah. night. Okay, so Lerma's this, her husband came, is coming tomorrow, might come or not, and, you know. So, and then we're so tired and at night, so it was just a very, it got briefer and briefer. <laughs> and I said, tomorrow, let's just see what happens. Let's just go. Um, yeah, so that's how it went. Are there questions, or anyone wants to say something about the film? Sie können natürlich gerne auch auf Deutsch Fragen stellen oder was zum Film sagen. 